Millie is an intuitive and easy to use recipe management app. It's designed to make your life easier by being the best recipe management experience on the web and providing you with an easy to use interface to manage your growing collection of recipes. In today's video, I want to share with you another fantastic Unraid Docker container called Mealy. Let's get started. Here we are on Unraid's main page. To get started installing Mealy, let's go to apps and the search box. I'm going to search for Mealy. There it is. So I'm going to click install. It's giving me a warning that the port is already in use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. In the container screen, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and show Docker allocations. Mealy is wanting to use port 3000 and it said that it was already in use. So I'm going to hit Control F on my keyboard and type in 3000 in the find window and see what comes up. And it's showing me Emulator JS is using it. So I'm going to change this port to something else. I don't see much in the 9000 range. So let's do 9900. I'll do a search for that and it looks clear. The app data location is good. All right, the next one is allow sign up. It's currently set to false and I'm going to leave mine on false. But what that does it allows other users to sign up for an account since i'm just using this internally i'm going to go ahead and leave this on false but if you want to allow people to sign up on their own then go ahead and set that to true next we have the default email this is going to be the username for your account so i'm going to use my demo accounts email and the smtp from field I'm going to set that to the same email and I'm using a Gmail account set up. So the rest of the settings will be for that. But if you have a different email provider, then you're going to be putting in your settings for your email. This depends on your email provider settings. So my email settings will be different from what you have. And the SMTP host is going to be smtp.gmail.com for me. That's already in there. And then the SMTP user is going to be the email account. And then for the SMTP password, that'll be the password that you use for your email account. Since I'm using Gmail, I'm going to generate an app password. If you're not familiar with what an app password is, it's a dedicated password that goes to just one app within the Gmail world. And since that will generate a password for me, I'll do it off screen. But let me show you Google's page on how to set one up. And I'll leave a link in the description for this as well. You're going to go down to the create and use app password section and follow the steps. Step one is to open your Google account. Step two is go to security. Step three is to make sure you have two-step verification turned on at the bottom, app passwords. And you can read the steps there. It's a pretty easy process to do. But what it will do is generate a unique password for Mealy that you can use within the container. So after you've got your password generated, you can go back to the Docker container and paste it in under the SMTP password field. And the SMTP port for Google is 587, so that's correct for my settings. And for the base URL, if you have a reverse proxy setup and a web domain, you can put the URL in this field. The rest is fine, so go ahead and scroll down and hit apply, and then done. And Mealy is now installed. Let's go open it up and see what it can do. To do that, go over to the Docker tab, find Mealy, go on the right, and let's turn on the auto start. Then we'll go over to the Mealy icon, click on it, and click web UI. And on the opening screen, it says, it looks like this is your first time logging in. And it shows you your username and your password. So go ahead and use that information to log in below at change me at example.com and my password make sure i got it right and then hit login We'll hit OK in the data breach. That is fine. We don't ever want to save this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit start now, and I'm going to create my own account. I'll put in my name, my email, and a password, and then hit next. Now it gives you the option to allow public access, which allows people to view the recipes without logging in. And under data management, it says use seed data, which merely ships with a collection of foods, units, and labels, and you can have it populate that information in. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So I'm going to hit next, verify your information is correct, hit submit. So in the background, Millie's going to create your account. And when it's done, you'll be prompted with this page saying that your setup is complete. You have the option to do a backup restore option or a recipe migration. I'm not going to worry about either one of those. And most of you, I'm assuming, don't have this previously installed. So we'll just pretend like it's a whole new database. A recipe database is useless without new recipes. So let's get started there. I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Recipe. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can either just create one manually or you can import one. I'll show you the manual process first. We're going to click on Create Recipe and then we can give it a name here. We're going to call this one Grandmother's Secret Recipe. And we'll click Create. And you set up how many servers this makes so we're going to say it makes a serving of four total time to make is let's say one hour prep time we're going to call it 10 minutes and cook time is going to be 50 minutes as you may have noticed as you type in this information it gets displayed up above here description we're going to call this the best recipe my grandmother ever made and i'm totally making this stuff up so don't try to make this one cup of flour yeah that sounds good we're going to add a single ingredient let's call this three cups of sugar we'll add another one say one tablespoon of water and two thirds cup of vanilla and then for our instructions we will say step one is to mix dry ingredients and step two we'll say add wet ingredients and we'll do another step mix well and one final step and we'll make this one bake 50 minutes at 300 degrees and on the left hand side under categories you can set different categories or tags for this recipe and any required tools we don't have anything set up right now so i'm just going to go ahead and leave that blank and scrolling back to the top on the right hand side you click save there you go there's your first recipe 
But what I typically do is just find a recipe out in the internet, copy the URL, and then import it that way. Let me show you how to do that. We'll start by opening up a web browser. We'll search for something sounds good. Chocolate chip cookie recipe. And this one here, the chewy chocolate chip cookies look good. Open it up, look through it. Yep, it's definitely what we want. Looks delicious. Let's do that. I'm going to go up to the URL and copy it. So we'll select everything and then Control-C for copy. Go back to Mealy and we'll click Create over on the left-hand side and then click on the Import option. Then right in the center where it says Recipe URL, you paste it in. Then you'll hit the plus Create button. And you'll notice that Mealy pulled in the name of the recipe, a description of it, a great looking picture, the total time, the prep time, and the cook time, how many servings it makes, all the ingredients, all the directions, the instructions on how to make it, and it put all that information in there way faster than you could. If you notice in the bottom right where it says original URL, you can click on that and it'll take you back to the original recipe that you'd found. It's kind of a nice little feature in case something was missing in the recipe directions or something wasn't quite right. You can go back and look at it and see what you need to change. Once you're done with the recipe, you can go back to the icon on the top left, click on that, and it takes you back to the main page. And if you wanted to enter another recipe, you do the same process. You select create, import recipe from URL. I'll go find another one real quick. Find one, copy the URL, go back to Mealy, paste it in, press create. And there it is. Sometimes when you import recipes, something will be messed up and you can go and edit that that manually. To do that, click into the recipe. On the right-hand side, you click on the edit icon. And from there, you can manually enter or edit anything you'd like. Like if you're not a fan of cayenne pepper, you could just delete that right out of the recipe. Or if you like a little extra spice, you could add in a new ingredient down at the bottom. I've imported a few in the past where it has under step one, it actually says step one as the first step. So you can edit that information out. You find the item that you don't want, you hit the delete icon, it gets rid of it. Once you're done with your edits, scroll back to the top and hit save. I went ahead and entered in a few recipes, something to play with to show you how it works. In the main page here at the top, you've got a search option, which you can just type in a recipe, something you're looking for. Let's say bread. Type it in, it filters it out. You can also search by categories, tags, tools. Under foods, you can search for a certain ingredient. So say you have a bag of apples that you want to use up, you can filter out apple recipes. Since we don't have any categories or tags, let me explain those and we'll add a few. For categories, I like to set up different types of foods, like Asian or barbecue or desserts or drinks or Indian, Italian, you know, that kind of information. And for tags, I use those to break it down further to designate different types of food, such as like beef, chicken, pork, breakfast, lunch, dinner, sides, breads, gluten-free, paleo, keto, that type of stuff. And for tools, I put in things like cutting board, food processor, slow cooker, pressure cooker, mixer, that kind of stuff. Things that are going to be needed to make that recipe. So enter these in. If you go over on the left side under organizers, you'll find categories, tags, and tools listed there. So let's go to categories. Then we're going to click create. Let's type in Asian. We'll hit create. Create again. We'll do BBQ and create. I'm just going to add in a few more. Drink, Indian, Italian, and Mexican. Then I'm going to jump down to tags and I'll create some there. I'm going to create same process, beef, chicken, pork, breakfast, lunch, dinner, side, bread, gluten-free, keto, paleo. Looks good to get started with. And let's add a few tools in. Go to tools, click create. We'll put in cutting board, food processor, slow cooker, pressure cooker, and mixer. In the beginning, you can enter in as many as you know, and then as you enter recipes and you need to add more, you just go ahead and add them at that point. Once you've done it for a while, then you'll pretty much have everything that you need in there, and it gets a little easier. All right, so let's go back to our recipes, and we'll apply some of these. So go back up to Mealy, click on the icon there, and we will find the first one here. So this is a drink. Click onto it. We will edit it under categories. We're going to call this a drink. And you can do multiple categories if it's a Mexican-style drink or, a, you know, dessert drink or, or whatever the case needs to be. I'm just going to go with that category. And under tags, I don't really think there's any fitting category here, so I'm just going to leave it blank. We'll scroll back up and hit save. Go back to the main page. We'll click under the bread and I'm going to edit that one. Nothing really fits for category, so I'll leave that alone. Under tags, it is a bread. We'll call that good. All right, back up, save. Go back to the main page. Go to the salad. We'll edit this one. Roll down. Categories. Doesn't really have a fitting category yet, so I'll leave that alone. Tags. This would be a side. We'll call this dinner or lunch. Go back up, save. I'll do the rest of these real quick. Call this breakfast. Hamburger soup. It's got beef in it. Dinner or lunch. And we're going to call this keto. I have no idea if it is or not, but going to make it keto. Ribs with barbecue sauce. Category, I'm going to call it barbecue tags. We're going to go with pork. Chocolate chip cookies. Edit. Category is a dessert. And hit save. And then last one, Grandma's secret recipe. Category, we will say that it is Asian and it's a dessert. And for tags, we're going to say that it is... Yeah, we'll go with gluten-free. Really messed it up. All right, go back to the top. Hit save. Then we'll have all those categorized and tagged. And you'll notice below that it has the different tags listed there now. So now if we wanted to search by a category, you can go to categories. We're going to say, I want a, an Asian dish tonight. So let me see what I've got available. And I've got one, my grandmother's secret recipe. How about by tags? Let's say I want a beef recipe. I'll filter it out by beef. Let's say you wanted to do beef and pork. 
select those and it'll show you both options. You have an option up at the top here to select has any or has all. So it'll filter out whether it needs both ingredients or just one. I don't need either one there, so I'll get rid of that. Tool, same type of thing. You can filter by cutting board, mixer, food processor, whatever you want. I don't have those assigned to items right now, but you can do that. So if I go back under grandma's recipe here and edit the required tools, you'd enter down there. So this is going to need, let's say a mixer. Go back to the main page after we saved and go under tools, select mixer, and the recipe shows up. Another nice thing with Mealy is it has the ability to do a meal plan and a shopping list. Let's take a quick look at the meal planner. On the left, click on meal planner and it shows you the current week. If you go to edit, it gives you the option to roll the dice and get a random recipe. So let's go ahead and try that. So for April 23rd, let's go ahead and roll the dice. We're going to have it choose a lunch. So we'll click lunch. There we go. Chewy chocolate chip cookies. Perfect lunch for a Tuesday. Let's go ahead and do a breakfast. Roll the dice again. Breakfast. There you go. Cookies for breakfast too. What a great day. And then we can do a random dinner as well as the next icon over. Oh, look at that. Cookies, all three meals. There's a different one. So roll the dice, pick a time frame, breakfast or lunch, dinner, and a side. And as you notice, it's throwing in some random weird stuff here. So obviously chocolate chip cookies are not a breakfast, not a dinner, not a lunch. So to combat that, we can create rules. Over on the right hand side, click on settings. And we can set up meal plan rules here. You can designate certain days of the week. Like if you know on Mondays you get home late and you just want something quick, you can designate quick meals. But right now for basic rule, I'm going to leave it on any. So any day meal types, I'm going to go with breakfast. And then the categories, we can break those down. Not necessary because we don't need to really worry about that. Under tags is where we have breakfast. So I'm going to click on tags and go to breakfast and then hit create. So let's create a rule for any Mondays for breakfast. The meal type is going to be a tag of breakfast. I'm going to make this every day though. So I'm going to go back in and edit that and change this to any then update. Now if we go back to our meal planner and we edit this, let's just start over and delete these out. So you hit the little trash can icon to get rid of those that'll clear them out all right so tuesday let's do a breakfast and since we only have one that we selected or we tagged with breakfast we should probably just get the same thing over and over wednesday breakfast wednesday or thursday breakfast yep so that's clearly working out let's create a few more rules go back to settings we will create a new rule all right you rule day any day that sounds good meal type we're going to call it lunch categories not going to worry about it tags we will tag lunch here and then create and we'll do another one for dinner tag of dinner and create and last one i'm going to do is side tags of sides and create those are all created we go back to our meal planner we'll go back into edit now if we do a lunch it'll throw in our lunch option we do a dinner it'll throw in <laughs> the same thing once you get a bigger recipe database it's going to have you know a lot more options to choose from and throw in a random side oh look it's the salad again do you get the idea of how it works you can also just create stuff right from here let's say you have two meals that are same two days in a row but you want to change it out a little bit like we've got this pear and parmesan salad you can just click these little dots in the front and drag it to a different day if you'd like back under meal planner you'll now see the whole meal for the week another really handy feature that mealy has is you can add everything to a shopping list so if you go to the day that you'd like to move to a list you can either select the individual recipe by clicking on the three dots in the bottom and go add to list oh, we don't have any lists yet so let's go create a list we'll go to shopping list we'll go to create and we'll call all this weekly meal shopping list all right so we've got a list there now we'll go back to meal planner we can add our breakfast one so we'll go to the three dots and do add to list select the list you want to go to and there it moves all the ingredients into it click add to list if you want to add all the recipe ingredients for that day go to the three dots on the top of that day hover over it and then go up to add to list select your list and then hit add to list now you can go to your shopping list over on the left you can go into that list and it shows you all the ingredients that you're going to need for those recipes for those days so now you can look through your list of ingredients and if you already have one of these you can just check it off let's say olive oil i know i've got that red wine vinegar we have honey i've got no idea what that is so i'm going to leave that on the list oak leaf lettuce don't have that milk sugar eggs there we go i don't have that stuff once you've got your shopping list narrowed down you can click on the copy icon copy this text or markdown and then paste it into your favorite program or what i like to do is just hit Control p and just print it right out makes it nice and easy when you're going to the grocery store to go shopping you got a complete list of everything you need for the week a couple other things on the left hand side we go under timeline it'll show you the complete history of everything that's happened within mealy it'll show you the recipes that were created when they were created and if you've made a recipe and marked it as made that will show up in the list as well let me show you how to do that real quick go back to your main page we're going to say we made this drink you just click on i made this it wants to know if you have any comments you'll say fantastic you can take a picture of it and upload it if you want made it at a different date you can change the date there but i'm going to say i made it today add to timeline now if i go back to timeline scroll to the bottom you'll see that i made this you also notice it has a little description of the drink a heart to favorite it and then a five star rating so whatever you want to rate it i'm going to say this drink was yeah it's a four but i'll add it to a favorite it was good you can also do that from the main recipes themselves we'll add the bread we'll say it was a three star the salad's a four 
waffles were kind of a bust. We'll say it was a two. You get the idea. Ribs, those were fantastic. There are five. And grandma's secret recipe, it was terrible when I made it, so we'll go with a one. In the top left under your user ID, you'll see your favorites listed there. You can just click on favorite recipes and it filters those out. Millie's really kind of got it all figured out. Got lots of options, lots of neat little features to it. It's really fun to use. My wife uses this way more than I do, but it's definitely made a big difference. Millie has the ability to scale recipes so you can double a batch or triple a batch or have a batch. It's not a feature that I've used, but I do know it's available. Millie's got the option to create cookbooks. And cookbooks are another way to organize recipes by creating cross sections of recipes and tags. Never use this feature, but it's there. So I jumped over to my main Unraid box and looked at the Mealy in there just because it's got a few more recipes in it. But as you can tell, it looks pretty nice. It's easy to use. Tags are in there. Lots of good stuff. So if recipes are not your thing and you want to learn more about game ROMs or movie management, check out one of these two videos right here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.